Okay, today's video is entitled Elastic Collisions Example Number 2, and this is the second example we're going to go over for elastic collisions. And what our problem says we have a ball that has a mass of 0 0.35 kilograms, and the ball is moving with a velocity of 2.0 meters per second, and it collides with a second ball that is stationary, which means it's not moving, and it has a mass of 0 0.75 kilograms, and we're going to take this to be a perfectly elastic collision. And we want to know what is the velocity of each of the balls after the collision. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to write down, because we have two balls and we have two velocities. We want to make sure we get all straight. So we write down M1 is 0 0.35 and its velocity, its initial velocity is 2 meters per second. The second ball has a mass of 0 0.75 kilograms. And it also, not also, but it has a velocity of zero because it's not moving stationary, it is at rest. And of course, we want to know what's the final velocity of each of them after the elastic collisions. Now, I think just to give yourself a second to think about it and maybe take a little bit of time to figure what's going on, it's a good idea to just draw a picture. So, of course, mine just looks like that. There's no reason to make it any real, really detailed. Maybe just draw, draw two circles and show one is moving and one is not moving. And that gives you some idea about what is going on and what we think might happen after the collision. Okay, now we're just going to get out our equations that we use for elastic collisions. And these are the two equations we use to calculate the final velocity of mass number one and final velocity of mass number two. You can see the equations are a little long. But they're not really that complicated as you'll see and in this case because cubal number two, ball number two is at rest. It kind of simplifies things quite a bit. So we're going to start off, of course, with finding the final velocity of the first ball mass number one. And you'll notice, of course, that at the very end of this equation, we have the velocity of the first, no, excuse me, the velocity of mass number two. It's multiplied times this term. Well, the velocity of mass number two is zero. So that means that this term is zero, and this zero is multiplied by this term. So that means this whole term right here basically goes away because it is zero. And now we can plug our values in to the remaining term we have here. And we have the final velocity of ball number one. Mass number one is 0 0.35 minus 0 0.75. We add the two masses together. We multiply that times the initial velocity of the first one, which is two. And we come up simply with the final velocity of the first ball of mass number one is minus 0 0.73 meters per second. Okay, that means it bounces off of number two and moves back to the left. So it's coming into the right and moving off to the left in the negative direction. This minus 0.37 uh, meters per second means that the ball is moving with this speed in the negative direction. You can see we get a negative number up here because this is 0 0.35 minus 0 0.75 and that's going to give a negative answer for mass number one. So that's mass number one, pretty straightforward, and basically the same thing for mass number two. Once again, we have this term over here, which is the final, the initial velocity of number two. The initial velocity of number two is still zero, so this is zero, and this whole term is zero, and that simplifies our equation for the final velocity of mass number two into two times 0 0.35, the mass of number one, divided by the mass of both of them, multiplied once again times the initial velocity of mass number one, and that gives us a final answer, which should make sense, for an elastic collision between those two balls of 1.27 meters per second for mass number two. You can think about it because mass number two is stationary, the other one hits it and it moves off to the right. Okay, so there we go. That is both of the velocities for mass number one and mass number two. And I just drew a little picture. This was the before picture. This one's at rest. This one's moving. Afterwards, this one bounces off and moves in the negative direction with a speed of 0 0.73 meters per second. And this one, because this is an elastic collision, this one was stationary at rest. And then it moves off with a final velocity of 1.27 meters per second. All right, so there you go. That is an example problem for using or determining the final velocities of two masses in an elastic collision. And we went through that. We showed you the equation that we're going to use, and we simply calculated those values. It's pretty straightforward. Just try and go step by step and remember all of your order of operations for those mathematical procedures. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you found it very helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Um, subscribe to my channel. 
get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.